Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. This is your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. Today, I'm here with Sami Inkanen, the Chief Executive Officer and Co-Founder of Verta Health. Uh, me, and me we were actually talking just uh, briefly about this. Uh, some of you folks know that might be listening. My brother is a diabetic, so we're going to be talking about that quite a bit. But before we get into Verta Health, who, let's give us a give us a quick little background, Sammy. Who who is give us who is your background? What have you been doing? Give us a little bit of history. Well, Gabriel, first of all, thank you so much for having me here. I am excited to join your podcast. Yeah, who, who am I? Well, I am a father of two wonderful little girls, seven and nine year olds, which I I think is my I know is my number one responsibility. But in terms of background, uh, I'm an immigrant to America, like many, and like many entrepreneurs. I grew up in Finland on a farm. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a long leap from a farm in Finland close to the border of Russia to America. But um, yeah, I grew up on a farm, studied physics. My formal degree is in physics. And in fact, my very first job was in a nuclear power plant in Finland. Oh, interesting. Um, which may be surprising for a healthcare entrepreneur. But uh, on the, at the same time and throughout my studies, sort of computers and software. So I was a kid of 80s and 90s. Computers and software kind of pulled me in. And that's how I way, paid my way through college. And soon after uh, joining the nuclear power plant as a radio chemist, I actually left. And that was kind of late into mid 90s. And ever since I've been in tech, um, started one company in Europe, then worked for a McKinsey company for a little bit, and then came to America uh, 2003. So I've been here now for about 21 years and um, been an entrepreneur, I'd say, since early 2000s. So about 24 years I've been founding and operating and scaling companies. Wow. Okay. We, we, this is, I'm going to have to take a step back and how do how you get from a power plant to healthcare? So let's, let's start with, you, with your kind of your, your nuclear power plant. How did what what made you decide um, to kind of go into the entrepreneurial world and then talk about a little bit about what your current endeavor is? Yeah, abs absolutely. Well, first, I should say the reason I ended up in physics was just that I was naturally, I guess, curious and gifted in, in math, mathematics and physics. And I didn't have a lot of role models at home because well, one reason was my parents didn't even go to high school. So I didn't really know kind of professional jobs and what you could do. But I realized I was good at math. So kind of followed that path, but then quickly realized that I didn't really have passion for that. What I did have passion was I was you, you, you know, you already... all in love with math. What? You, <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, it, it, well, funny <laughs> enough. Um, but I always I, I, I've been a sort of a dreamer. I've always been thinking about what could be, what should be. And um, already in my teen years, I, I sort of set up and started one of the first BBSs, so bulletin board systems in Finland. And I, I got a lot of joy from creating something, in this case, like a service for other people to sort of dial up and then, you know, exchange files and, and communicate. So I got a lot of joy from creating something from scratch that then other people were using. So I'd say that's the, the thing that I've been chasing all my life. Um, what can I create that would be of use and benefit for... Um, for other people. And then the tool, sort of the hammer in my back pocket has been software and technology. And so before I kind of explain the healthcare journey for the last 10 years, uh, when I came to America 2003, soon after that, I co-founded a company called Trulia, which is a real estate marketplace. And, uh, you know, if you are in the Pacific Northwest, so you probably know Zillow. So I co-founded Trulia and then uh, our friends uh, started at Zillow around the same time. And so that was a phenomenal 10-year journey for me from about 2004 to 2014. Uh, Trulia went public and then Zillow acquired or we merged. Those two companies merged. Um, and that was yet another example of creating something out of scratch, which was super exciting. And obviously, as an immigrant to America, to start a company that then has a product or service that tens of millions of people use and company goes public, it was sort of... It was this captivating journey. And as an immigrant, to, to be able to do that in a country where you know nothing about real estate or the business in this country was just, I'm so grateful to America and this country that, that that's possible. Anyways, there's nothing about healthcare there. There's nothing about healthcare <laughs> in, in a nuclear power plant. So how did that happen? Quite honestly, after Trulia, I was like, okay, well, 
that was fun. That was phenomenal, but it was also crazy hard work. Like some people have said, being a founder operator is like eating broken glass every day. Every Although day. it can be fun. But after that, I was like, okay, well, maybe I can just sort of help others. There's no need for me to be in the ring and being punched in the face every day several times. <laughs> so that was kind of my quote unquote career plan after, after Trulia. Yet everything changed uh, after I discovered that I was myself on, on, on the way to type 2 diabetes and I already had pre-diabetes. And the reason it was kind of a shocking diagnosis for me was I was, and I think to some extent still am, a high-performing endurance athlete. I did a lot of triathlons and won the world championships in my age group in triathlon 2011. And I thought, you know, wow. I certainly don't have to deal wow. with the crap that uh, more than half of American adults are dealing with, that is obesity and type 2 diabetes. But there I was, um, metabolically unhealthy and on my way to type 2 diabetes. And I, I, I thought, wait a second, what is going on here? Like, I'm an athlete, I'm lean, I'm excellent. This is impossible. And I got very curious about the problem, kind of like the physicist thinking that this one data point called me yeah. is not agreeing with the hypothesis of the theory or the, or the rest of the data set. And I, I met with a number of scientists, particularly a gentleman called Dr. Stephen Finney, Stanford MD and PhD from MIT in nutritional biochemistry. And largely through his work, I learned that there's two things uh, I, I was kind of wrong about when it comes to metabolic health and type 2 diabetes. Uh, number one, uh, it's not a personal choice. It, it is it is a metabolic disease. Correct. Um, and then secondly, contrary to what most people think, it is actually possible to nutritionally, fundamentally reverse the disease without any heroic efforts, without any willpower. And when I learned these two things, I thought, oh my God, there's this is like the health epidemic of our generation, type 2 diabetes and obesity. And if there's a systematic way to not just manage it with pharmaceuticals, which still ends sadly, in a very bad way, we can reverse this disease. This is like a Nobel Prize winning worthy endeavor. And long story short, I kind of pulled myself out of my neck, out of my quasi retirement and said, let's go, let's, let's start a company. We can use this nutrition science. And if we combine it with technology to provide the individualized support that people need, we can reverse type 2 diabetes. And that's a phenomenally important problem to solve. And here we are. And so that's how a non-healthcare person got pulled into healthcare. And here I am nine, 10 years later. You know, I, I think that is a testament to like, that's just entrepreneurship 101 folks, where I think a, a lot of these innovation ideas come out with a problem that somebody is going through, right? And, and you know, Somni's basically identified a problem that unfortunately millions upon millions of people are actually going through uh, on a daily basis. And, and folks, if you've listened to my podcast, one of the things I've mentioned before as well, uh, is my brother as well as a, is a diabetic. Um, and, and, you know, there's, there's, it's, a, it's a life changing thing, you know, now there, uh, you know, Sonia mentioned he is type two, you're focused primarily on type two, is that correct? Correct. So for those who aren't familiar with diabetes, uh, whichever country you go, America, China, India, Finland, more than 95%, more than 95% of, of diabetes is, is type two, which used to be called Adult onset now, for better or worse, worse, I would say there's children also with that. So that's type 2, 95%. Type 1 diabetes is actually a very different disease, um, although it's called uh, diabetes. So we are focused on type 2 diabetes, which also was, and by the way, type 1, there's no cure yet. Right. Everybody's working very hard, and hopefully over the next couple of decades, we'll figure that out. But type 2 diabetes was similarly... Uh, thought to be chronic and progressive, where the best you can do is manage high blood sugar with medications. And best you can achieve is slow down the progression of the disease, which still ends up in dialysis, losing your eyesight, losing your limbs, and sadly, often to death. But it is a reversible condition, which we've now very well demonstrated in, in clinical trials. And now more than 100,000 people have benefited in the real world in, in America from our treatment. So it is, it is, it is reversible condition. And if there's one message that I'd like to, you know, put on a billboard and tell the world, it is like type two diabetes is reversible. We can do it nutritionally. And that should be the first line of defense when someone's diagnosed. 
You know, one of the things you mentioned too is is um, once you found out you were you were type two, is you actually reached out to a specialist out in Stanford, and you were like basically uh, collaborated with them to determine, you know, what you're currently now. What why was why was the collaboration and reaching out? Why was why did you do that? Why was that so important? Um. Well, first of all, I should say n equals one makes no science. It's it's, it's an absolutely anecdote. However. Um, many and most entrepreneurs need that visceral N equals one conviction and experience. And it was no different for me. Uh, it really started from personal uh, frustration um, and maybe frustration combined with excitement um, to start reading and reaching out to scientists and go, what the heck is going on? In fact, I was maybe there was a feeling of being ashamed and embarrassed as well, because I always had this programming running in my head, which was, if you're struggling with obesity or type 2 diabetes, I was always kind of judging in my head, like, that's your own freaking problem. You yep. ate too much. Yeah. And then I never vocalized the words, but it's kind of like, you loser. And that's why yep. my taxes are high. And that's why we're suffering. And then I realized I was one of them. I was one of us. And it was a humbling experience. It was kind of eating a lot of humble pie, uh, pun intended. And so there were a lot of emotions kind of going inside of me, but luckily I was able to kind of turn them into a positive forward moving momentum. But it was all about me at, at that time and trying to get to the root of this issue and then realize that, wait a second, there's like decades and decades of science. And in fact, if you go hundred, literally hundred years back, uh, before insulin was invented, the treatment to type 2 diabetes was, guess what, food. And it was in med medical documentation for doctors, detailed, what do you prescribe if someone has type 2 diabetes? Because insulin, obviously, it's an endogenous for your body, but exogenous was not invented at the time. It's food. And then here we are 100 years later, we've taken almost like steps backwards. So uh, the, the, the scientific foundation of Verta Health goes like nearly 100 years back, um, although the company is only nine years old. And I, I get very excited. It's almost like as an entrepreneur, when you discover, quote unquote, a secret, that is a solution to a massive problem. Diabetes, type 2 diabetes, it's just massive. 10% of adults, India, China, America, then you add pre-diabetes and obesity, you look at more than half of adults. And so it just felt like literally I was sitting on a secret yeah. that ought to be told to the world. You know, and it's interesting you mentioned that, um, you know, the the kind of perception I think individuals have for different medical diseases. Uh, another great example is lung cancer. Folks, I, I work in the healthcare field. I've been in it for over 25 years or so. Lung cancer, um, you know, I think typically people are like, oh, you have lung cancer, or you've been smoking your entire life, you've been smoking yeah. cigarettes, that's what you get. Well, what we've been seeing recently is a lot of Asian women under the age of 25 that are no smoking history yeah. at all are actually getting lung cancer, a very high rate. Uh, and we're starting to realize it's actually not has anything to do. And this is kind of what uh, Somli mentioned is it has nothing to do with your diet. It actually turns out it was it was, it was anatomy. There's actually your genes sometimes. Um, unfortunately, there's there's the there's the cancer gene as, as well. So if you have the BRCA1, BRCA2, right, you're you're susceptible to higher cancer, pancreatic cancer, and breast cancer, and colon cancer. So all of these different things. And and to your point, Somni, uh, we're still figuring all this stuff out. You know, like previously talking about, hey, why don't you go ahead and uh, eat more food to help cure your diabetes, which we kind of find out that's probably not the case. Now, let's go a little bit more into Verta. Tell it, tell me a little bit more about how you kind of actually started the program. You mentioned, you know, you found out you had diabetes, reached out to the team over at Stanford, and then talk about how you kind of created like your minimal vial product to actually go out to the market. And then tell us exactly what is it that you do. So if, a, if folks out there listening and have type, uh, type 2 diabetes, how does Verta Health help them? Yeah, let me start from the sort of the tail end of your question, yeah. like, how do we actually do and where does this science come from? So anyone who listens to me is one like, oh, he's a physicist. And actually, I went to Stanford, to, to got my MBA. So I have a master's in physics and, and, and an MBA, which is to say, I'm not a medical doctor. I don't play one on the internet. I don't pretend <laughs> to be one. And so I want to be very clear that I, I co-founded Verda with two amazing scientists and one then became... Um, my chief medical officer as, as well. So again, Dr. Finney, who did his MD at Stanford and then PhD at MIT. So when I talk about science, and this is not like 
a physicist just took a piece of paper and started scribbling. <laughs> uh, so, so, so what do we do? Again, it, it's based on obviously now our decade of iteration and improvement. But even before we started, there was a three decades of um, published science as well as uh, clinical practice by, by my co-founder. So he had been able to iterate. So what we do precisely is one, we use nutrition and as much real food as possible to fundamentally reverse type 2 diabetes. But we do it in a such a way that we can eliminate your hunger and cravings. So by the way, if anyone has heard GLP-1 drugs, like Ozempic, why does it work? Why do they work? Why do people lose weight? Because you're not hungry. Yep. So we achieve the same nutritionally. And at the center of that is we individualize carbohydrate intake below your what we call uh, personal carbohydrate tolerance level. But one part of our protocol, it's, it's, it is nutrition, and it's all through behavior chains, meaning we don't sell shakes, shipped food, or anything. It's all through behavior chains. And then the second part is, is the telemedicine and the technology and the individualized support. So we assign each patient with uh, a Verta coach, Verta medical doctor, who is our full-time employee. So these are our team members. And then, of course, they interact with the care team through technology or to be specific, smartphone or computer. Uh, and so when you join our program, join our treatment, we basically work with you, you know, get your biomarkers, we do your lab work, and then we figure out, okay, how do we individualize this nutrition treatment to you? And then on a daily basis, we monitor your biomarkers. And based on that, we can say, okay, maybe you had too much protein. Maybe we need to reduce this. Uh, and then we individualize around sort of your personal needs. Food is kind of, it's almost like a religion. We may have someone who comes in and says, I'm a vegan or vegetarian. That's my identity for whatever reason. You can't tell them to eat, you know, bacon for breakfast, for example. And so that's a silly example. We also work with, you know, lots of Fortune 500 companies, Native American tribes. In some of these Native American tribes, people may work in a casino. Obviously, the food that you can access there is very different from a stay-home dad or mom who can go to Whole Foods buy organic produce and cook at home. So we have to individualize around that. So there's a high degree of individualization happening all the time. And then we just iterate and support the member on a daily basis based on the data that's, that's coming back. But the goal is always use nutrition to reverse your type two diabetes or deliver sustained weight loss in a way that you don't have to be hungry or, or use your willpower. Uh, and it, it works beautifully. Um, so that's kind of the tail end of your, your question. What do you actually offer for them? Uh, that, that's what we offer. And the goal is always to, to uh, make you healthy. And then the first part of your question was sort of the minimum viable product. Um, quite honestly, we uh, took a massive leap early. So we have, you know, started in San Francisco, you know, tech investors early, you know, digital health, all this world. And we don't need FDA approval because we're not creating a new molecule. But we took a giant risky leap in the eyes of many of our investor observers, which was to start a five-year prospective clinical trial. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. you did. many people, that's okay. crazy. That is pretty Why nice. Why would you use your little <laughs> so Right thing? off the bat, you're just jumping into it, aren't you? <laughs> uh, so... We, you know, we obviously we had again the decades of science, so we kind of knew how to do the like how does the science work? But then we had to digitize the whole thing and deliver this digitally. We didn't know how well it would work, and we also wanted to demonstrate to the world and prove to ourselves that this is safe and it works. Because when it comes to anything nutrition related, whether it's for weight loss or general health or whatever, let's be honest, ninety nine percent of it is bullshit. And since there's no FDA approval required, it's difficult to kind of separate the noise and the signal for consumers and, in our case, the business buyers, the benefits leaders, and health plans. So we said, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to run a five-year trial, and the chips will fall where they fall. If it works, it's amazing proof point. If it doesn't work, we should not exist. We shouldn't be in business. Yeah. So the answer to your question is, that was kind of our start. Obviously, we had a conviction that the science holds, but you never know how it's actually going to work out. Well, good for us, the results coming in in 10 weeks, one year, two years, was just phenomenal. And we said, hey, this is crazy. We get people off of insulin in, in a matter of weeks. Blood sugars come down. People lose weight. We'll look at other blood results. Inflammation comes down. Cardiovascular disease markers improve. And it was 
it was like mind blowing the, the early results, but that's kind of how we got started. And only after we had enough data and the first couple of papers published, we said, okay, now we are ready to the world. Now we can quote unquote launch the company and kind of start to go to the market. But it was a very um, kind of a orthogonal approach to launching a tech company, I would say. But, but you know, I, 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 this is a good point, especially for entrepreneurship, for folks listening is you, you, the way you kind of got to your minimal viable product is you tested the market. You, you kind of said, yeah. okay, before I go out and let me, let me see if this is a value to the market that I'm trying to sell it to. And then once you've, uh, you, once you had the validation, okay, now let's go ahead and fund the project. Uh, I, I think a lot of times too, and this is, this is the steps I think the proper steps individuals should take when you're actually going into an entrepreneurial endeavor is make sure that when you, you have an MVP, your minimal viable product, and then make sure you actually have a market for it. Right. Uh, you you yes. might have created an NBP, you, but you might have a solution to a problem nobody has, you know, and so so making sure you actually have a market for it. And then once you do, OK, now let's let's throw in some funding because now we actually have validation that our product or service is actually a value. It's going to make some sales. OK, now we can move forward. And, you know, one of the. Yeah. I think thing that was really interesting too is is you know you're you're tracking these patients you're you're monitoring them and by the way started a you know an actual clinical trial that was remarkable crazy as well because again you just don't know really truly you just don't know but awesome because now you can truly take that to you know you you do a CME and you say hey during the continuing medical education here's our findings about Vera. Uh, Verda, what do you guys want to do, right? Uh, and one of the things I think, we, you know, we're here in Portland, we actually have a preventative cardiology team, maybe something to, you know, maybe your next iteration, because preventative cardiology has everything to do with food as well. Um, yeah. And one of the things we've noticed too, and I, I really like your concept about creating really a concierge approach to medicine and, and diabetes care, because when you go outside of cultures, uh, and I'm sure you've, you've seen this too, Somni, uh, quite significantly, the African American culture, the Native American culture, and the indigenous culture, like myself, yeah. are prevalent to diabetes because of the food. Uh, we are historically, yeah. uh, our culture, as you know, I was picking berries and pulling plants when I was eight, nine years old. I was very much a vegetable food kind of person. And then as yeah. you age, you get a lot of processed foods, a lot of sugars. Hell, I'm drinking a freaking Starbucks right now talking diabetes. That's probably not the best. Yeah. So don't follow my lead. Uh, but you know, you start to gain some understanding of like, it, it's also about a cultural thing. Be, and then it's in, you start to understand the importance of the concierge medicine, because nobody's patient's journey is the same. You know, we all yes. have different makeups, uh, our body reacts different to different things. And so having that concierge kind of approach is, is really, really cool. I really like your uh, approach to it. Now, based off of you, you mentioned you have clinical trials. Can you, can you share what, what's, you mentioned you have some one or two year uh, data points. Where are you currently at in your clinical trial and what has the data been showing? Yeah, we've actually completed the five year prospective clinical trial and we published about a dozen uh, peer reviewed papers and. Uh, presented at the American Diabetes Association annual scientific sessions, I think, last four years. Uh, so, so lots of data. I'd say the, the, the most remarkable results is, first of all, the fact that we can uh, reverse type 2 diabetes. So what does that mean in practice? It means that we can bring your blood sugar down below the diabetes limit. It's usually measured at A1C. It goes below the diabetes limit while simultaneously eliminating all diabetes specific medications. So just to give you an example, our, what we call diabetes reversal rate is 60% at one year. In a standard of care, it's about 0% because diabetes just gets worse. Uh, insulin, which is usually sort of a last hope drug, um, and you increase it about 10% or so year over year. Uh, from start to two years, about 80% of all insulin dose is eliminated, which is like unheard of. And those of you who follow healthcare costs, there's a lot of conversations about how do we lower yeah. insulin costs? And I often say, well, I know even something better than lowering insulin costs, make it unnecessary, yeah. eliminate the need for it. So that's an insulin example. Um, weight loss, uh, at one year we have, depending on the population, 12 to 13% weight loss, sustained at two years. 12 to 13% average weight loss on an intent to treat basis. It's a clinical trial term, intent to treat basis, meaning you look at everyone, not just the good ones who stayed, is unheard of. Like to get to 5% is like winning Olympic gold at it's one year. Or in a sustained to the 12 to 13% is unheard of. 
So simultaneously, this is all published peer reviewed. Inflammation comes down, uh, blood pressure or hypertension comes down, cardiovascular disease risk markers come down. We've shown sleep apnea improves, knee pain improves, depressive symptoms improve. Um, what else have we have we published? Uh, liver markers, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease markers improve. Uh, kidney uh, markers based on EGFR, which is a measure of kidney function. We've been able to take patients from CKD 3B to 3 and 2, which is like reversing early kidney disease. So anyone listening might be like, this is, sounds freaking too good to be true. It may be, but you know, again, these are all published and, and peer reviewed results. And the reason, and maybe it's not surprising that this happens is we don't treat individual symptoms we treat the underlying driver of poor metabolic health with nutrition. And there's a little bit of a debate, what is the fundamental underlying driver, but it's one of these three things. It's, it's either inflammation or obesity or insulin resistance. We have our hypothesis, mm -hmm. but the bottom line is we improve all of those three. So your weight comes down, your inflammation comes down, and then your insulin resistance, so your fasting insulin and fasting glucose comes down. As a result, it knocks out five, six, seven different quote-unquote chronic diseases that are thought to be separate. So high blood pressure, cardiovascular disease, risk markers, and so forth. But they all have the same common root, which is poor metabolic health. And so anyway, this is kind of a long answer to you, to, to you, but when you address poor metabolic health through nutrition, you actually, surprise, surprise, improve the whole health and you knock off many what's considered separate chronic diseases. Yeah, you know, and that's exactly what we kind of talk about in our preventative cardiology group as well is, you know, folks, some folks are probably thinking, wait, how does, how does that help my heart? Well, you think about your food, you know, coronary calcium scores, we actually do that. And it's basically, you know, calcium built up in your valves that will create a heart attack because yeah. of the food we eat. Um, you know, uh, fish oil is a very, very good thing for people with hearts or people with diabetes, you know, trying to look like natural things of that nature, um, really making sure you're, you're watching your carb intake. There's a lot of different things that go into this. And, and uh, you know, uh, as Somni was mentioning, it's like your knees feel better because you're actually losing weight. So you're not a lot of weight on there, right? Um, you're, you're feeling less depressed because you're actually being able to get up. You're not feeling so tired every day. You're not waking up exhausted. Um, you know, all of these things that go into it. And it's, it's very interesting. Uh, because it kind of seems like you almost have two different target audiences, really. One, you have your patients, right? The patients that are going to be actively yeah. using it. You want them to use it. You want them to be able to get better. But then you also have like the healthcare side, either the hospital yeah. or provider, because if you get in that clinic space, all of a sudden that provider is a champion of your product and they're actually informing their patients. How do you market to each one of those segments? Yeah. There's actually a third constituent here as well, which is maybe, uh, well, certainly equally important, if not the most important, which is, and this is very exciting um, to me and, and for our whole company, that is the payer. The oh, payer yeah. who oh, pays the payer healthcare is very critical. And the reason I mentioned that is yep, there's multiple reasons. One is that in healthcare, I've learned it the hard way that go to market is as important or more important than your product you're offering. In fact, the, the, I, I use this mantra internally that in healthcare, best product doesn't always win. Sometimes the best go-to-market strategy and execution wins. If you also have a best product and you have a great go-to-market, magic happens. And I feel like that magic has now been happening for us. So, so let me just explain in, 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 in a sec. So we sell to the entities who pay healthcare bills. And there's three types of entities roughly in America. It's self-insured employers. So about 100 million American adults get insurance through self-insured employer. More or less any employer with say 1,000 or more employees, certainly all Fortune 500 companies, they pay your healthcare bills. So this is anything from United Airlines to UPS to Papa John's to US Foods, by the way, all our clients. Um, so that's one category. Another category of healthcare payers are the actual insurance companies who sometimes take insurance risk which is when they have money on the line and sometimes they just administer the plan for those health insurance employers. So help us the second category. Third category is certain government entities. Obviously they pay for Medicare, the Veterans Administration, VA, which is also our client is, is sort of in that. And then there's state and federal entities. 
So we sell to those payer entities with a value proposition that practically doesn't exist in healthcare, which is, guess what? You're going to get your patients healthy. We healthcare. are going to make lower you money. Bill. Exactly. We make these patients healthy and we lower the bill. And even better, yeah, I'm a founder. Of course I say that. But guess what? If it doesn't work, you pay nothing. You pay absolutely nothing. So we put 100% of our money where our mouth is. And so it's very rare in healthcare. You talk about cancer, cardiovascular disease. Oftentimes, it's a brilliant new innovation treatment. It costs $500,000. And then we are counting how many lives we saved. Then we're like, well, we can save two lives, but we need to pay half a million. So we, okay, is that, guess what? Reversing diabetes or helping someone lose weight sustainably, we can calculate within 12 months, you make money. And like getting someone off of insulin, yeah, there, there you go. You save 6000 a year easily. Um, so that's the economic model. And so if you're an individual suffering from, your, from type 2 diabetes like your brother, you have 100% free access to Verda. Free access to Verda. And to answer your question finally on the marketing, we use a lot of these clients that we work with as engagement and marketing partners. So if you happen to, say, be a flight attendant or work, you know, package handler for United Airlines, you'll probably get an email or have gotten an email from them saying, hey, if you're suffering from type 2 diabetes, worry no more. We pay to you a Verda treatment that can help you get your life back, get you off of your drugs, lose weight, get rid of your diabetes. You know, click here and you can talk to Verda doctors and see if this is right for you. So that's kind of our primary channel through which we engage individuals, much more so than, say, local health systems, so primary care doctors. Obviously, we communicate to them and we are not taking business away from them. In fact, we're helping them. Right. But the primary channel is directly through the payers to the individual. That makes sense. You know, folks, a great example of this, like I mentioned, I work in healthcare, working at Oregon Health Science University. We got the diabetes, the Schnitzer Diabetes Center right there. Um, Spring Health, right, for, for counseling. They, they said, hey, by the way, we have this relationship with Spring Health. So if you need a counselor, here you go. Fidelity, in, investments. Hey, we got a, we have this for investments uh, if you need it for the, And again, all of these, it's a few different things that the, the company is doing it for. One, you know, some employee rent, uh, retention, you're right, engagement, trying to get some more products. But two, you know, to your point, Somni, in regards to the payers, the healthier, you know, folks, when it comes to insurance, when when you when you see here about the Affordable Care Act coming through, and you're you're hearing about people trying to get more Americans on insurance and trying to get them healthier, the reason for that is is because if we actually have more healthier individuals, our healthcare costs actually will go down. Uh, as Sami was mentioning, you know, you're looking at you know you're looking at people with diabetes previously. I'm like, oh, they're the reason my healthcare is going up. Well, it's actually the people that don't go to the doctor, that the reason our health care goes up. And the reason they tend to not go to the doctor is because, as somebody mentioned, this shit's expensive, dude. Like, it's really expensive. If you're not going through a payer and you're asking for, you mentioned like a cancer drug, um, and they're not able to pay for it, then that's coming out of your pocket as a patient. And what ends up happening is we call it financial toxicity. Because at some point, we be, have to begin to think about, okay, yeah, we can continue to give you this, you know, $500,000 chemo infusion. However, financially, uh, it doesn't make sense. You know, your, 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 um, your way of life is very important. Your quality of life during treatment is important, but your quality of life after treatment is important as well. And, and if you look across the United States, most of the Americans are actually in debt because of healthcare, uh, because yeah. of the cost of healthcare. And so it's, it's all kind of all wrapped around in this real big bubble. And I like your strategy about actually going to the payers because I think the payers are going to find the most value. Um, I think providers are going to be like, oh, great. Another thing you want me to push to patients, you know, so on and so forth. Granted, you have the data so you can show them the uh, value as well. And with patients, it's it's kind of interesting because patients will kind of, they'll listen blindly sometimes to the providers, you know? So if, if your yeah. endocrinologist is saying, hey, use this app, they're probably like, oh yeah, okay, well, let's do it, you know? Um, and, and it sounds like, you know, you're being seems like you're being pretty communicative to like the, uh, you know, different uh, electronic healthcare record system as well, you know, CERN and Epic and all those other things. Because again, having this information, like you mentioned, creating all these data points and having it in the patient's chart. So when they show up to an appointment in your primary care, your endocrinologist or general cardiologist, whoever's seeing you has this information, they can start seeing your markers, but then also see why. That's another validation for Verda to say like, hey, actually, 
by the way, I had this patient on this app. This is what I'm seeing their biomarkers do. And this is, I would highly recommend it. So really, really awesome job uh, and very smart, you know, trying to go through that. Now, what's what's the future look like? Where, where's, where do you guys scale from here? Oh my God. Uh, so much work to be done. Uh, but I, I'd say a couple of things. Number one, we started with the mission reverse type 2 diabetes in 100 million people reverse type 2 diabetes in 100 million people and we very narrowly and carefully communicated we are here to reverse type 2 diabetes for a couple of reasons because that's what we do and then but secondly it was the most uh, outrageous claim that we could make and really wake people up like oh my god can you really really reverse type 2 diabetes yes we can and here's the evidence um, but we didn't talk about all the other uh, benefits such as weight loss. So to answer your question, number one thing uh, that's now sort of 6 x our market, and it's more or less thanks to the Ozempic Wave and the GLP-1 drugs is we are very focused on literally just scaling our type 2 diabetes reversal and sustainable weight loss offering. And the sustainable weight loss, while we've been doing it since day one, it wasn't really a focus for us because there wasn't attention for obesity. A lot of payers, we talked about payers, they're like, ah, obesity, I don't know if I should spend money on that. Guess what? Now everyone wants to solve it. Why do the payers want to solve it? Well, first of all, there's more attention because of the GLP-1 drugs. But secondly, these drugs cost even more than insulin. We're talking $1,000 per person per month, 10,000 a year. So if you don't have something better and cheaper, we are literally bankrupting this country. We are literally bankrupting this country. So, so that's the one thing that we are hugely focused on now, scaling the type 2 diabetes reversal and the sustainable weight loss. And this is good for our business, to be quite honest, but it breaks my heart that more than 150 million Americans, in fact, way more, so more than half of American adults now either have type 2 diabetes or obesity. So there's like a massive, massive scaling effort there. So that's, I would say, is the, the number one thing for us. The second is, which supports the first one is, we still feel, I feel, that Verda is the best kept secret in healthcare. Like, that's why I'm excited I, to have this sold. conversation. You got me sold. Sh sh share about entrepreneurship, but also like, you know, you can't open a newspaper or online site or, or social media without reading about GLP-1 and Ozempic. That's wonderful. But guess what? We have an evidence-based nutrition treatment that costs nothing and it's working. That should be on a cover of every newspaper and social media because that is how we get this country and people and the costs out of the mess. So that's kind of the second and we are really focused on telling our story in an evidence-based way, not waving hands from social media, but saying like, hey, here's the data. It's saving money. It's saving lives. Let, let's make it happen. So that's the sort of a second thing as it relates to future. And then the third one is, I, I can't give too many details, but you kind of alluded that, oh, metabolic health, it's kind of knee pain and maybe cancer and this and that. So we have a couple of clinical trials in the works, but I would just, as a teaser, I would say that of the $4 trillion that we spend on healthcare today, at least somewhere between one and 2 trillion, so quarter to half is metabolic disease. So it isn't just diabetes and obesity. They drive many, many other things, including some cancers. So this metabolic health bundle all of which we can affect nutritionally is absolutely the health epidemic of our generation. So we are looking at different specific conditions in that metabolic health mess and we'll be rolling out. That's going to be a couple of years out, but it starts from a clinical trial and we have a few things, a uh, few things going on. Yeah, folks, you gotta you gotta understand. You could uh, you can in fact get cancer. You know, fatty liver can lead to cancer. Yeah. So just be mindful of that. And you know, uh, it's it's interesting, Sami. You mentioned you know, you do hear about all these weight loss drugs, Zampix. <laughs> oh oh oh! If you have if you have not heard that commercial, folks, and it's not in your head after hearing that damn thing, it you it's everywhere, right? <laughs> now it's it's interesting though too when you kind of mentioned like you're kind of the best kept secret, and and you kind of 
almost alluded to it. It's because we're America. We're a capitalism country. At the end of the day, why do it's it's kind of sad because we will put more focus on medication that's going to make us a revenue than actually removing the disease outright. Because if we do, then we lose the medication revenue. Right. And so it's like it's like this catch 22 where you you do see the pharmaceutical world tend to get kind of the front cover of the news because, again, revenue drives a lot. Right. Um, But I really I'm very interested to learn more about what you guys are doing at Verda and and keep me. I will definitely ping you Uh, again. I work at OHSU. Uh, If you need uh, some clinical trial sites, let us know. I work with a preventative cardiology and a cancer team. Uh, I basically support cancer, cardiovascular and general surgery. So really everything you focus on. And, and as you mentioned too, uh, you before the weight loss drugs, what was the option? Bariatric surgery, folks. That was that was pretty much it. Yeah. If you wanted sustainable weight loss, that was it. You know, and so so it, it, it's true, you know, what Somni's mentioned, it, it's is you if you're gonna create something of value, it has to be it has to meet the value that this current that the current product is giving and it has to be cheaper. So those and I, 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 yeah, no, absolutely. And I, I will, I'll, I'll, first of all, I have to tell this story because this is my, my favorite about outcomes. It's, it's one thing to say peer reviewed papers and prospective clinical trials, and here's data and 13% weight loss, whatever. And yeah, it works hundreds of thousands of people, whatnot. But the number one proof point for me that what we deliver has exceptional value to the individual that goes beyond the mathematical calculations. This you see my T-shirt here. I have a bird up, bird a logo. We Love call it. this the spark. We have not one, not two, not three, but many. I know four personally. Patients, Verda patients, who permanently tattooed this company logo oh, awesome. in their bodies after reversing their type two diabetes. How many healthcare brand, pharma companies, insurance companies, like how many people tattoo the logo? Of the healthcare provider in their body. Yeah, I, I, very I few. There's not too <laughs> many AstraZeneca tattoos out there that I'm aware of. Or Pfizer, you know, I don't, maybe there is. I don't know if you yeah. have them by all means. Maybe you have like the Da Vinci Code device tattooed on you. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, but that, that's, there you that's go. a great point. That's a great point. I think that also brings validation uh, to what you. Now, so many. If folks are listening, they're interested in learning more about you or Averta Health, or maybe want to connect with you, how can they find you online? Well, honestly, do you go to Google, search Verta Health, V-I-R-T-A, Verta Health. And we have so much free content on our website, our YouTube channel, there's a bunch of videos with million. There's one video from one of our doctors that had more than 10 million views. That's completely free. Wow. So if you had curious, like, wait a second, can you really reverse type 2 diabetes? Can you really deliver sustained weight loss? It costs you nothing to search information. And by the way, if you are reasonably lucky and your employer or health plan covers Verta. And yes, we work with health plans in Pacific Northwest as well and lots of large employers. And you're suffering from type 2 diabetes to BC. Verta is 100% free. 100% free to you as an individual. No copay, no nothing. And so we, we, we can help. But, you know, you're curious, do a Google search and spend 15, 20, 30 minutes and, and see what you think. You know, like my dad always tells me, free is a good Price. Now, folks, if if you go on Google and you can't find this information for some reason, Google is too difficult. I would highly recommend you check out the Shades of Entrepreneurship newsletter. Uh, visit the shades of e.com. You can subscribe to the newsletter. We'll have all of Somni's information. We'll have a, a link back to his. It will also have a transcription of this conversation with audio and video. Uh, so please, again, subscribe to the newsletter by visiting the shades of e.com. You can also follow us on the social sites on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, LinkedIn. LinkedIn and all the other socials I can't even remember. Somni, thank you again so much uh, for joining the show. Very, very interesting. I'm, I will definitely connect with you offline. I would love to kind of continue to hear more about how you guys continue to progress and, and what is it that we can do here in the Pacific Northwest to help support uh, your guys' venture uh, in, in the diabetic space. Uh, so folks, again, listening at home, please subscribe to us at theshadesofe.com. Thank you and have a great night.